In this video, we're going to see how chemists choose potential energy diagrams. First of all, we see that the forward reaction goes from the left side to the right side on the graph as we follow the red line. The difference in energy between the reactants and the activated complex is called the activation energy. And since we're dealing with the reaction going from left to right, or the forward reaction, we call this EA forward. Now the difference in energy between the reactants and the products, the net difference from the very beginning to the very end, we call the enthalpy change, or the delta H. Notice in this case that the enthalpy or potential energy is going down. This is called delta H forward because it deals with the forward reaction going from reactants to products. Is this reaction endothermic or exothermic? What do you think? Well, it's exothermic. That's because the delta H is negative. Okay, let's consider another reaction and its potential energy diagram. Looking at this one here, we see the activation energy for the forward reaction and the delta H for the forward reaction. Notice this time the products are higher than the reactants. So, is this reaction endothermic or exothermic? Well, as you can see, it's endothermic because the delta H is positive. It goes up. We can always recognize an endothermic graph by seeing that the products are higher than the reactants. We can also consider the activation energy in delta H for what we call a reverse reaction. A reverse reaction, we go from right to left on the graph. So here's an example here. In the reverse reaction, we start with what we call the products. If we follow the blue line, we'll see what happens in the reverse reaction. We go from right to left products to reactants. Now the EA for the reverse reaction is from the products all the way up to the activated complex. So it's this difference in energy here. So we call this EA reverse. The delta H for the reverse reaction is the net difference between the products and the reactants. This time the enthalpy is going up. So delta H is positive for the reverse reaction. So, is a reverse reaction endothermic or exothermic? Well, as you can see, the reverse reaction is endothermic because, as we said, the delta H is positive. Notice that the activation energy for the forward and the reverse reaction are both positive. Activation energies are always positive because you're going from a lower state to a higher energy state here. Also notice that the delta H forward and the delta H reverse are equal in energy, but they're opposite in signs. In this case, the delta H forward is negative and the delta H reverse is positive, but it's the same energy amount. Also, it's probably quite obvious that if the forward reaction is exothermic, then the reverse reaction must be endothermic, or vice versa. For example, in this reaction, the forward reaction is exothermic. Delta H is negative. But if we look at the reverse reaction, it's endothermic. Delta H is positive. All right, let's look at a potential energy diagram with some actual numbers on it. Remember, potential energy, like all energy, can be measured in kilojoules, Kj. So if we look at the diagram, we see the potential energy axis is in kilojoules, and those are the numbers there. I want you to try getting these answers before you proceed with the video. So what is the value of EA forward? What do you think it is? If we draw it on the graph, you notice that it goes from 25 up to 45. So the answer is 45 minus 25, which is positive 20 kilojoules. We can also see that it's positive by seeing that the arrow goes up like that. So what is the value of delta H forward? What do you think it is? Well, let's check it out. Notice that for delta H forward, we're going from 25 in the reactants to 5 in the products. Also notice that the enthalpy is going down, so it'll be negative. 
So how we can do this is just take 5 minus 25, which is negative 20. Another way you could do this is just look at the difference. 25 minus 5 is 20, and because it's going down, it's negative. So delta h forward is negative 20. Okay, what do you think Ea reverse is? Well, Ea reverse goes from here all the way up to here. So it goes from 5 all the way up to 45. So the answer is 45 minus 5, which is positive 40 kilojoules. Remember, Ea is always positive. So what is the value for delta H reverse? Well, as you can see, delta H reverse is going from here up to the reactants. So it's from 5 up to 25. Also notice that it's positive. So the answer would be 25 minus 5, which is positive 20 kilojoules. You notice that the delta H reverse is equal and opposite to the delta H for the forward. Another question they might ask is what is the energy of the activated complex? Remember, this is the activated complex up here, the species corresponding to the top of the graph. The energy for this is simply 45 kilojoules. They're not asking for the energy to get from the reactants to the activated complex. They're simply asking for the potential energy of the activated complex. If they ask for the potential energy of the reactants, that would be 25. And of course, the potential energy of the products would be 5. Another question they sometimes ask is which set of species has the strongest bonds? By sets of species, they mean A2 and B2, A2B2, or 2AB. So which ones do you think have the strongest bonds? Well, the species with the lowest potential energy are the most stable. These have the strongest bonds. So the answer is 2AB. Also, you could look at the fact that it would take 40 kilojoules to get from here up to the activated complex and start breaking the bonds in AB. To break the bonds in A2 and B2, to form the activated complex would be from 25 up to 45. So it's only an increase in 20 kilojoules for that one. So which set of species has the weakest bonds? What do you think? The set of species with the highest potential energy is the least stable, and this has the weakest bonds, the activated complex. Sometimes we're given problems where we're given some of these things and have to find the other ones, but we're not given the diagram. So in these cases, we have to draw our own potential energy diagram to help solve the problems. Let's look at an example. Here's an example here. For a particular reaction, Ea forward is positive 25 kilojoules and Ea reverse is 40 kilojoules. And we have to find the values of delta H forward and delta H reverse. The best way to approach this kind of problem is to draw a simple potential energy graph and start right at the top, right at the activated complex. And then from the information given, draw what you can on the graph. In this case, you can show approximately the Ea forward and the Ea reverse. Let's see how that's done. So here's the information here, Ea forward and Ea reverse. And we start with the activated complex, the top of the curve. We know that Ea forward is 25 kilojoules. So therefore, the reactants must be 25 kilojoules less than the activated complex. So we draw that in our graph. Ea forward is 25 kilojoules from here up to here. We also see that Ea reverse is 40 kilojoules, more than 25. So that means the products would be 40 kilojoules lower than the activated complex. So we draw that approximately to scale, and Ea reverse would be 40 kilojoules. Now to find delta H, we have to look at the energy difference between the reactants and the products. So we draw a couple of lines in there. We see that this value here is 40 and this value is 25. So this energy value here would be 40 minus 25, which is 15. 
Delta H forward is the net difference between the reactants and the products. Notice the forward reaction, the potential energy is going down, so delta H is negative. So it is the negative of the difference between 40 and 25, which is negative 15 kilojoules. For the delta H reverse, we're going from the products up to the reactants. So that would be positive 15. The difference is 15, and since we're going up, it's positive. Let's do another example. In this case, we're given the delta H forward is 30 and EA reverse is 40. And we have to find the values of EA forward and delta H reverse. Well, let's start by drawing a little graph here. Here's the information up here. We're going to start with the activated complex on the top of the curve again. And we're going to look at EA reverse. EA reverse is 40 kilojoules which means that the products would be 40 kilojoules lower than the activated complex. So we draw this on our graph. EA reverse is positive 40 kilojoules. We're given that the delta H forward is positive 30, which means going from the reactants to the products, we have to go up by 30. So the reactants would be 30 lower than the products on the graph. So delta H forward is positive 30, the reactants would be over here. Now notice that if we want to find EA forward, it's the net difference between here and the activated complex up here. So as you can see with the numbers, this distance here is 30 and this distance here is 40. So the value of EA forward would be 40 plus 30 which is 70 kilojoules from here up to here. EAs are always positive, so EA forward is positive 70 kilojoules. Now we want to find delta H reverse. Delta H reverse would be from the products down to the reactants. So it would be from this energy to this energy here. If this is positive 30, then delta H reverse would be negative 30.